my strongest ally and best friend in the whole world is my mother. She's 100 years old. Sometimes when I'm with her, I look in her eyes and I think, my God, my mother's lived for a whole century. You know, she was a little girl before anyone heard of Woodrow Wilson, before World War I. My mother was 14 years old in junior high school in the eighth grade, the last time the Red Sox won <laughs> the Red Series. It's been a rock of strength my whole life. When I, remember I told you that when I started teaching, I wasn't political in the least, but after I saw what was being done to children, in our inner city schools, I became political and I joined civil rights protests and, and uh, was part of the marches and demonstrations of those years. And you know, you might think my middle class um, parents would be nervous about this, and they were at, at first. And I was a little worried. Some of you young people might think of this. We always think, you know, I wasn't afraid I'd get in trouble, I knew that I'd survive. Um, you know, young white guy who's been to a college like Harvard or Amherst or woman, guy or woman, you know, we know we're going to survive. Uh, I got fired from my job in the Boston schools the very end of the year because I introduced a poem that wasn't permitted in the course of study by the poet Langston Hughes. Uh, they didn't have any black poetry in the curriculum then and they condemned me for doing this. And, um, the children loved the poem, but um, the school system used this as an excuse to fire me at a time when they realized I was gravitating into the civil rights movement. They also fired me to make it even-handed for reading a poem of Robert Frost to my students, and, and just to toss that in, even though it wasn't a politically militant poem, as Frost tends not to be. It was a poem many of you know by heart probably called stopping by woods on a snowy evening, as NAACP leader later said, probably the whitest poem ever written. <laughs> but I got fired anyway, and because they had these strict curriculum demands, and it was the black poetry they didn't like. Langston Hughes is, a, is an angry poet, and that's, that was the reason. And it was on the front of the newspaper and, you know, in, in Boston. Something like, the headline was something like, Road Scholar Fired from Third Grade of fourth grade, Rhodes got fired from fourth grade. The formal charge against me was curriculum deviation. You know, a funny way America works, within a month I was hired by the federal government for curriculum development. <laughs> uh, so, and, but most of all I was concerned like that it would upset my, my folks. Isn't that interesting? Now, have any of you ever have that worry that if you take risks, it's not that it'll hurt you, but it might hurt your folks. Give parents credit, they sometimes can transcend your lowest expectations. Um, my mother didn't call me, she didn't criticize me, she didn't condemn me. She just came out and joined the picket line herself. There she was holding the arm of Ellen, Ellen Jackson, our leader, marching in the street. And I still remember her trying to, you know, clapping her hands and trying to sing the freedom songs, even though she didn't know the words. You know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. She helped me so much then. She helps me still. She still scolds me. That'll never stop. And to be honest, I can't bear the thought of losing her. I, I. Pray like a child that she'll live forever. I keep praying that, that, she, that my mother will live forever, but I know she can't. None of us can. My friends, we all know we're going to die and lose the people that we love the most to death. The old trees and the foolishness of children will outlive us all. Life goes so fast. Use it well.